Hello, hello. So we're going to be talking about three signs of estrogen dominance and what you can do about them. So I'm just going to get my Instagram here to go live. Signs of estrogen dominance. Sorry. I had it prepared, but then it deleted it. All right, we'll get started in just one second. Let's get my Instagram set up. Okay. Hello, how are you guys? I hope you are doing well. Hello, hello. So we're going to talk about some signs of estrogen dominance. Now, this is a very common thing that I run into. So I want to talk about it because I feel it's important so you can learn the signs from your body. And then from there, you know what steps you can take. So I'm going to share a couple of the signs of estrogen dominance. And then I'm going to share some tips on what you can do first steps to kind of get going. So what is estrogen dominance? So estrogen dominance is where there is too much estrogen in the body. And there's a couple different causes for this, and I'll cover those in just a minute. But this can cause a lot of different fertility issues. This can cause a lot of hormonal imbalances. And it can make it so you don't feel very good. <laughs> and you have a lot of stuff going on when it comes to your fertility. All right. So the first reason or the first sign that the body will show you that there may be too much estrogen going on, estrogen dominance, is heavy periods. So one of the reasons this is, is because estrogen is responsible for stimulating the growth of the uterine lining. So when you have a lot of estrogen, it, it stimulates a thicker uterine lining or it stimulates a, yeah, a thicker uterine lining. So when you get your period, you have more uterine lining to shed. So you have a heavier period. You may have clots. The length of your period could be longer, uh, longer than five days. It is considered a heavy period. You have to change um, your pad and things multiple times per day. So heavy periods is one of the biggest signs that I see that the body is saying, hey, there's something going on here with your hormones. And estrogen dominance happens to be that. So clots, clots that are larger than a quarter, that kind of thing, okay? Uh, the next sign of possible estrogen dominance is going to be low progesterone. Now, you might be wondering, how do I know if I have low progesterone? Okay, so a little side note here, low progesterone, the body will spot before your period begins because the uterine lining is starting to shed early. You maybe are your fertility charting and you can see that your progesterone levels aren't rising during that time. That's one of the reasons I love fertility charting is because you can tell so much about your hormones. You also could have just had a test done and it says you have low progesterone. Now your body could be producing progesterone, but you have so much estrogen that the ratio is off and the progesterone is not able to have the effect it normally would. There's a lot of different causes of low progesterone, but if you have excess estrogen that can affect your progesterone levels. The other sign of uh, estrogen dominance, things growing in the body. So I know that sounds super freaky when I say it like that, but estrogen is responsible for stimulating growth, right? That's one of the things it does. So if you have things growing such as cysts, uh, uterine fibroids, endometriosis, those types of things where you don't have or where you have something growing and being stimulated that you'd rather not have there, that's estrogen dominance. And then the last is for women who are gaining weight around the middle, like you're not really gaining in the thighs but you're gaining it more around the belly in the middle, that tends to be uh, another sign of estrogen dominance. I'd probably pair that with one of these other signs though, just to kind of make sure. So what can you do? Should you go get testing done? What is it that you should do? So sure, you could go get testing done. What I really like to do though, is I really like to listen to the body. I like to take the steps to help support the body and then see, is there a change, right? Because that's going to be really helpful. So we went over the three signs, heavier periods, long periods, uh, heavy clots, low progesterone, things growing in the body, you'd rather not be there, and then possible weight gain around the middle. All right, so what are some steps you can do to help the body to deal with excess estrogen? So there's a couple different things. The first is, is I generally always encourage liver support and supporting the liver because the liver, one of its responsibilities is getting rid of excess hormones, specifically excess estrogen is one of them if you're in excess. So we wanna support liver health. There's a lot of natural therapies that can help support liver and its function because it can use the support. It's doing a lot beyond just hormone regulation or hormone balancing. The next thing is I highly encourage you to get rid of xenohormones and endocrine disruptors from your home. Uh, so this is chemicals that are found in cleaners, skincare, hair care, 
those types of things, body care that mimic hormones. They mimic xeno, they're called xeno hormones and they mostly mimic estrogen. And what they're doing in the body is they have a very strong stimulating estrogenic effect. And then we're having this response to them as if that is our own estrogen, but it's a much stronger estrogen stimulating effect than our own estrogen would ever be. So you're going to take all these steps to help your body kind of to overcome and deal with excess estrogen, but you don't want to have sources of estrogen still coming in. So doing a ditch and switch, switching out your products. I'm going to be doing a whole class on this tomorrow that goes into depth where I'll share what are the exact like ingredients to look for when you're shopping and how do these different hormones affect our, our, or these different chemicals affect our hormones? What's the studies behind it? This is pretty, a pretty big deal because it can also affect your baby in utero. So I'm pretty passionate about talking about that. The class is tomorrow at three o'clock mountain standard time. Uh, go ahead and reach out through private message. If you would like the link to that, if you're on my email list, you got an email a little while ago about that class. All right. So getting rid of xeno hormones. Another thing I like to do is there's a supplement called a DIM, D I M. You can get it at the natural fertility shop. You can get Fertilica DIM. And what this is, is this is a compound that's found in cruc cruciferous vegetables that helps the body to get rid of excess estrogens. That's a very simplified version of explaining how it works, but that's its main purpose. And that's been really helpful for people to help manage that and to help the body to process that. And then the other thing I like to do is I do like to support the whole cycle. So when someone is experiencing ex excess estrogen, a lot of times they're going to have low progesterone. So I like to support the first half of the cycle using phytosupportive herbs. These are herbs that are going to have a estrogen protecting effect because they can go into the receptor sites and they have a very weak action, but because they're blocking the receptor sites, those very strong chemical estrogens cannot have that stimulating effect that they can. So that's protective. Um, so I like to use um, plants at the beginning part of the cycle for that. I like to use plants to help support healthy progesterone production, the second part of the cycle, because that's something that is going to generally be out of balance or at least in ratio to the estrogen. And then I always like to support the endocrine system because that is the bigger picture of hormone regulation and helping the communication loop. So I like to do that through drop cycle method. Um, that's another method I taught about last week. I can send you a link to that class if you were not able to catch that. But those are the main signs of estrogen dominance. Those are the first steps I like to take. Now, I know a lot of you are going to write me and say, hey, I have A, B, or C. Will this help me? So this is a part of the bigger picture. It's generally where I like to start. And then if you are experiencing specifics, then you would go ahead and you would use probably some additional products to help the body to deal with some of these other things in addition, but this is always going to be a helpful base for you. So I hope you found that helpful. I'm trying to keep my tips short, um, but that's kind of where you can start if you're experiencing some of these things. And this is more common when it comes to women experiencing different fertility issues. They tend to be estrogen dominant, especially 35 and younger, 40 and younger, um, that ends up happening. So, all right, if you guys have any questions, I'll stay on real quick to answer questions, but I hope that you found that helpful. And I'm going to also be putting up a quiz in my Instagram stories. My Instagram's natural fertility info, and it will help you to figure out, Hey, am I experiencing excess estrogen? All right. Awesome guys. All right. Is it true that fibroids can cause chronic bloating and other digestive issues? Um, so can fibroids cause chronic bloating, other digestive issues? So there could be, there is a lot of link between hormonal imbalances and gut health. So we, the whole body is always affecting other parts of the body. So if someone does have issues with digestion, metabolizing, they eat a lot of sugar that can have an effect on how we, how our hormones function, how our endocrine system functions. So it's this whole cycle and this whole picture. So if you're having digestive issues, you definitely want to support gut health in addition to the things that you're helping to support your body with dealing with the fibroids and helping all of that. But there, I don't know if it's necessarily cause, but it's always connected. Is a heavy period if it's long, but light flow? Um, no, a long, a long period with light flow is going to be a little bit different. Are hot flashes caused by high or low estrogen? So uh, an anarita, that's a great question. It depends on what the rest of the picture looks like for people. So a lot of times I find that hot flashes towards the end of the cycle are going to be caused from low. Um, but it kind of just depends on what their their whole hormonal profile is looking like, like the rest of their cycle, because generally those are caused from a big fluctuation 
from one hormone to the other. So if you're very low in estrogen and then you are, are your progesterone is high and then you're low in estrogen and then you go and the progesterone goes low, you have this really dramatic drop in hormones and you get these hot flashes. So it's going to be different um, depending on what the rest of your cycle looks like. Can you still get pregnant during perimenopause? If you are ovulating and you have enough time for ovulation implantation, um, that is way too loaded of a question for me to, to answer <laughs> without knowing more about you. Is bloating associated with high estrogen? Um, it could be, but it's not like one of the main signs. I feel like so many people have gut issues now that bloating, you could say bloating's associated with this and bloating's associated with that just because it's something that's underlying for a lot of people, especially those who are experiencing hormonal imbalances. Um, but it could be connected, but it's not as direct of like a way, but it should be overall health care support for yourself. Um, is it necessary to do an estrogen test to find out? You could, Nakaya, you could visit with your doctor. You could get an estrogen test, you know, see what they're going to suggest. Um, I personally, you know, these signs from the body, the natural steps that you can take are things that are supportive for overall hormonal health. They don't have side effects like medications and things like that. Um, what contributes more to miscarriage would be the low progesterone, which excess estrogen can affect. And if there's things that are being stimulated to grow. Yeah, mood swings, that's another thing. That could be another sign of... Um, definite hormonal imbalances. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you found this quick video helpful. I will be on again tomorrow. Have a great day.